Hi everyone, um, my name is John Speakman from Games Forum. Um, thanks very much for tuning in and welcome to today's episode, Privacy, an Obstacle or an Opportunity. Um, don't forget viewers, you can get involved and join the conversation uh, with fellow attendees using the chat box to the right of the screen. Um, so yeah, let's, let's dive right in. So as widely reported from January 16, 2024, every publisher will have to have ins install a Google certified CMP in their apps. Um, but despite the challenges that this presents, publishers that are early in adjusting to this change are actually seeing some new and potentially unexpected opportunities coming with it. And we're going to discuss some of those today with our expert panel. And I'm very much delighted to welcome Manel Martinez, Head of Mobile at Homer Games, um, Valeria Sadrio, Director of Product from UserCentrics, um, and Kristen Rivers, um, CEO of Adimo. Um, so as usual, let's start with some introductions and then let's dive right in. So um, Kristen, you're at the top of my screen, so let's start with you. If you could uh, introduce yourself to the audience. Oh, thank you very much. I'm really excited to be here with uh, with such an amazing panel. So thank you. Uh, my name is Kristen Rivers. I'm a co-founder and CEO of in-game ad platform Adinmo. Um, you know, we're the, the reason Atomo exists is we think that the the absolute best way to connect uh, to connect brand advertisers to those hard to reach, uh, hard to target audiences that, that they want to talk to is, is through the medium of non intrusive, uh, non interruptive uh, in game ads. So um, so that's why we exist. I co-founded the company uh, five years ago. And um, it's been a, an exciting journey, and the, the the topic of privacy and consent has has always been part of the Adamo journey. Um, you know, I've always felt that that we were going to be in this world where uh, privacy and consent were going to be vital to the industry, and and I'm glad that it, that world is finally coming about. Excellent, um, Larry. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, very happy to be here. My name is Valerio, and um, I am director of product at UserCentrics. UserCentrics is a leading consent management platform. So we basically help companies to capture the consent from users, uh, to pass it to third-party technologies, and make sure that privacy is respected. At the core of UserCentrics uh, is also the trust. So our goal is not only to give tools and technologies to companies actually to collect the consent and to respect the laws, et cetera. We will talk about it later, but also to build trust with the users, which is super important. So hello, everyone, and uh, looking forward to this great conver conversation. Yeah. Excellent. So great to have you on board. Um, I'm Anel. Hey, yeah. Thank you, John. Uh... Very welcome, everybody. I'm happy to be here. I'm Manel, head of mobile at Homa Games. Uh, as you may know, Homa Games is a publisher with more than 80 games published already and more than 1 billion downloads. So our main challenge related to privacy is, of, for sure, um, make sure all of our games are always compliant and we have a, a very smooth process to adopt all the regulations that might pop up in the future and yeah to be legally compliant and that has a pretty much challenges that we can discuss uh, later on. Excellent. Right. So, um, so folks, let's, let's jump right in. So um, I very briefly want to kind of just set the kind of scene in terms of the landscape, how we've got to where we are today. Um, you know, taking, look, looking back a few years, obviously GDPR was launched in 2018. Everyone seemed to have dealt with it. Privacy is very much a hot topic again. Um, so, you know, why have Google taken this step from your point of view? So um, I'm going to pass this question over to Valeria to start with. Uh, well, uh, I always say privacy hasn't gone anywhere. There always been, the regulation is there since 2018. The reality is a few months ago, over hundreds of apps and 90% of them didn't show a compliant banner. We're not collecting the, the, the consent in a compliant way. But what is happening really, and the question is why Google is taking this stance, is actually because the regulators are actually going after the, the big players. So now, yesterday, just yesterday, so right timing, uh, the European Commission has released the uh, text of the Digital Market Act, and it uh, basically names a few companies uh, between which uh, there are uh, Google, uh, Meta, Amazon, six of them, TikTok, et cetera, ByteDance, and basically obliges them uh, to uh, make sure that consent 
So the decision of consent, uh, positive or negative, has been collected by the users before accessing any of their services, regardless if their services are directly as, uh, accessed by the users or they are accessed by publishers. And that's why now Google is telling everyone, hey guys, now it's time to give us proper consent because otherwise we cannot serve you with our technologies. And actually we can expect this to happen with Meta, with Amazon, with Microsoft, with Apple, uh, with ByteDance. So everyone is probably going to uh, take a more stringent approach now on, on privacy. Let's say in a short term, the GDPR flag or the mm -hmm. homemade banner uh, wouldn't work, uh, will not work any longer. Yeah, for sure. I think that's a really important point to note, everyone. Um, you know, this this is compliance here. So this, this is not a passing fad. This is not going anywhere. Um, Manel, if you could kind of um, summarize, you know, what's your perspective yeah. on, on the upcoming changes? Yeah, definitely. I 100% agree on that. Uh, we as publishers or game developers usually take a lot of time and effort on developing the games, the core mechanics and everything. And we put all, all the other things aside and we usually don't pay that much attention. We just want, okay, I'm. what's the minimum thing I need to do to be more or less compliant and not get a uh, big fine or whatever. So we've always have been doing that way. And now that potentially our monetization may be compromised in the future with Google saying, well, we won't, we won't serve ads if you are, you are not compliant, then that's where we start to pay more attention because we see this risk in there. So I think that's a, really the big change around why the reason a lot of people now is putting a lot, a lot of interest on, on this, definitely. Okay, cool, right. So um, let's talk about impacts. So Kristen, how has it kind of impacted? You know, you mentioned at the start that compliance, you know, privacy has always been at the forefront of Adimo's thinking. That must put you in pretty good position, but what have been the kind of operational impacts for you? Yeah, um, a great question. I think you know we, we've been we've been trying to push this message uh, at Atomo of increasing uh, consent and trust. Um, you know, because because you know for us it was you know the the benefits uh, of doing this properly, uh, you know, were, were obvious, were immediate, and significant. And, you know, and by that I mean the the commercial impacts of this. I think the. Um, you know, what, what's changed, which is interesting, is, you know, the the timing does feel like now. I mean, we've been we, we've been trying to get this to to, to 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 be at the top of developers and publishers' minds for for you know for, for years, right? It's never gone away. This this issue has never gone away. Uh, but it's also, I think, because it's never been properly implemented in mobile. Um, you know, what Manel said, which is not unique to Homa, you know, everybody in the in the in the ecosystem has tried to be more or less compliant. And I think that's the uh you know, that more or less has been the interesting thing. But I think the the, the combined weights of you know, a $1.2 billion fine on Facebook uh, from the, the European Data Protection Board. Um, the what, what the platforms are doing, Google, for example, and presumably Apple will be doing uh, soon as well, means that uh, the whole industry is, is coming to, to, to realize that this is, this is important, uh, both for them as the industry, but also the other part that we, you know, we want to talk about at some point, that trust uh, message is, is across the whole ecosystem from the advertiser all the way down to the publisher, to the ad monetization platform, all the way down to the user, and uh, and everybody is starting to think about trust in that um, in that model now. So, when we're talking to publishers, it is really great that we're no longer having to to um, to say to them, you know, this wouldn't it be good, uh, you know, hmm. please take some of your developers away from focusing on new features to focus on this. They, you know, as as uh, Valerio is seeing as well, developers and publishers are thinking about that. This is now top of mind for everybody, so it's great. And if I can add something here, like touching on what Manel said, this is not the core business of a, of a publisher. So a publish when I say uh, games were not compliant, it's not to put the weight on them, oh, you must be compliant. The point is that this is complex stuff. So it's not yeah. like something, you know, a, a game developer wakes up and becomes a law expert and legal experts and can pick the data processing service that is running in the app. So already by saying that, most of the people are saying, what this guy is talking about. So the, <laughs> uh, the, that's the point. The, the, the challenge has been, and uh, we knew since two years ago when uh, when at user-centric, I started the, the whole uh, apps 
approach. We knew that apps also needed the compliance, but uh, compared to big companies, enterprise, for example, they have a legal team inside, etc. The apps world is made also by small studios, by mm-hmm. uh, indie developers who actually don't have the resources and budget to to to, to you know to you know build a consent banner, a consent solution, etc. So that's the idea: how to simplify privacy for uh, for for publishers so they can keep doing what they do best which is developing games because otherwise they should be starting developing privacy solutions which is not uh, the best for the industry i would say not for the gamers as well no one wants to play with a banner <laughs> it's a really good point actually i mean you know we all know that studios range in size from one through to hundreds right so i mean yeah Flurry, I mean, the specific steps that you guys have taken over at UserCentrics to adapt to very different needs of, of the mobile mobile games industry? Yes. Yeah, we've been working very closely with the... So we, we knew the challenges, so we said, okay, let's sit together with some publishers who are a little bit more, you know, uh, aware of this topic and they want to take it early. Oma was one of them uh, that uh, was uh, very early in uh, saying, okay, let's do something about this. Um, and uh, we we sit with them and say, okay, what are your needs? You know, because because there are some specific needs of large publishers. For example, and um, uh, maybe we can touch upon this later. But this uh, uh, publisher have multiple apps to manage, have a portfolio of apps. That means not only one banner. There are <laughs> hundreds sometimes, or uh, 50, 60 banners that you need to run over different geographies. There is a lot of complexity because we talk about. There's popping up a lot of privacy regulations left and right. So there is a complexity also of keeping up with these regulations and also updating all the technology to make sure that you are compliant. Uh, Our goal was always to simplify this as as much as possible. So our our objective is to get a publisher up and running in 10 minutes with with their banner. Everything is is done. They can do some minor tweaks, but... Most of the time, they can sleep well at night without thinking about uh, privacy again, or at least not every day. Let's say. <laughs> uh, now, when did question? When did you um, start thinking about this over at Homer, and you know what new considerations that did you kind of experience and and learn along the journey? Yeah, to be honest, as Valeria said before, we had our in-house GDPR or regulation setup, which is for sure less effective than the solutions we have today. But the cool part was when when we started to see the ad inventory and monetization, uh, well, we saw some opportunities in there. For example, uh, companies that started to stop serving ads if you were not compliant. So we said, okay, but what... What does it mean if we need to be compliant? What should we do? So we started investigating a bit technically because we did a lot of uh, technical assessment to live together with all the systems we have in there. And, and I have to say it was really easy with, with Valerius team and user center like 10 minutes up and running. That's true. Now we have our default or base implementation. And then we can iterate on top of that. We want mm-hmm. to be more granular, precise regulations for China, for California, like different banners here and there. We can start building on, on top of that. But at the uh, starting from a, a good base uh, is really important, which unlocked us some ad inventory and for sure some monetization improvements. That was the key. Which, by the way, was an hypothesis we had, uh, what we didn't know, uh, if it was like uh, how much the, 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 this, this is, was going to impact. Uh, that time with, uh, with Oma as well, we said, hey, guys, let's sit down. Let's see if actually this is a relevant you know, impact on your business. Because I, w- I was speaking a lot with the also DSPs and everyone in the programmatic industry and say, hey, but we have an issue with this consent signal. Uh, there is an opportunity in monetization, but no one really proved this. So everyone was like, yeah, you can make more money. And everyone was like, how much more? <laughs> mm-hmm. So we sit that we sat down with uh, with uh, with Manel and team from home and say, okay, let's measure this. Uh, and 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 the guys there saw actually a pretty impressive. Uh, um, increase in the ads LTV 
10 percent um and we did not numerous tests on, on multiple games and manel can can uh, can dig deeper on that but the point is that actually it was true that uh we were unlocking inventory and that was actually a revelation also for us because we knew that that was a thing but actually when we saw that i said okay that that is actually happening this is this is actually a thing now yeah interesting so it's almost as if um I mean, it's been previously seen as very much kind of regulatory. This is the compliance issue, but you, you're saying that this is more and more a monetization challenge. That's quite interesting. So, I mean, Kristen, from your point of view, how have the changes affected the way that you guys over at Adimo were delivering ads and collecting data from from the publishers and, and the games that you're working on? Yeah, you know, it, it, it is a, um, it, it's it's no longer just kind of the regulatory aspect, uh, as you said. And I think, you know, touching back on both what uh, Manel was saying and Valeria was saying, the problem with compliance, uh, when this was driven by, we need to be compliant, I mean, we as an industry, um, compliance, you know, we're the games industry and compliance isn't fun. I'm sorry, there's no way around it. And, you know, as much as I love the, the concepts of privacy, and you know, I said that drove us, you know, when I speak to our lawyers about the details of, uh, you know, privacy policies and retention policies, my eyes glaze over and I'm not a game developer, right? So, you know, that that's the challenge we had as an industry. So what's been shifted is, um, you know, this is now a priority because this is no longer just compliance and, you know, something we have to do to this is this is monetization. And I think what's also been interesting is the, when it was just a regulatory thing and just compliance, again, we all kind of deprioritized it. Um, when it became something that was dri monetarily driven and monetarily driven by two parts, by the platforms. So as we spoke about uh, on the Google side of this already, but the other one is the advertisers. What we've been seeing uh, as an ad network ourselves is that we have advertisers that just simply won't bid on, won't buy uh, inventory from players that don't have trusted consent. And so that's the one of the other kind of real drivers here is it's coming instead of from the bottom up, it really is coming from the top down of where the money's flowing. And you know, do you want to do you want to have your your revenue stream impacted? or not. So that's, I think, been the, the kind of key difference for us as we talk to, uh, to to publishers now is that, you know, this is not just a uh, compliance issue. This is a, you know, advertisers and people that are that are buying your inventory, your ad inventory, simply won't buy if that trusted consent isn't there. And, and yeah, that's that's the, uh, sorry, Manel, uh, just to add on, on, on uh, Adimo's point and Kristen's point on, especially from premium advertisers, and that's why, for example, we, we work closely with Adimo because it's about also the, some specific ads, so premium ads, high quality ads, et cetera. And if you think about it, it, it all comes together because high quality ads, better experience for users, more trust, et cetera. So privacy is connected to that point and the brands want actually to make sure that the consent is given because they want also to you know, make sure that they do everything right and uh, anything they advertise is to people who actually agree to that. Uh, so all the dots are connecting and uh, it's not just compliance any longer. So that's what we we were saying, actually. Yeah, well, I was going to add that. We can assure that on, on that uh, top to down money flow we're talking about. Uh, it's, it's really measurable and we have seen it. We see higher... ECPMs, we see increase in LTV at the end, we are getting more high quality inventory. Our users are more high quality users for the people that is investing on, on those ads. So yeah, all, all the flow is it's asserted and, and it's true. Have you got any kind of um, numbers, Manel, that you can share in terms of uplift that you've seen? Like since yeah. The We've seen uh, some here and there on game metrics, like, uh, the, but the big interesting thing is we've seen between five and ten percent of ad LTV worldwide, uh, which is which is great. But also there are some metrics that are very concerning to game developers, like, hey, if I put now a banner, the first thing to my game, I will have a ten percent drop or churn of my players. My retention will be affected. Uh, how is this? And we have to say we have not seen that drastical impact in churns or retention or anything. And I think it's because more and more players and users in general, I think the industry has done a great job on 
teaching them and educating them on we do this for their privacy. So, and, and when I think when they see now a well done banner with everything detailed, they say, okay, this company is caring about my privacy and I can trust them for sure. They're doing things right. So I'm okay with, with this company. And I think that's a, that's a good thing moving us forward. Well, 100% there on, on Manel's point, uh, there is a lot of worries about opt-in rates and, and people, you know, don't liking the banner, leaving the game, et cetera. And uh, this was something also we measured as Manel was saying, and because also at the beginning also, oh, I had this concern, no, like uh, what, what is going to happen now with the, but actually it was not the case. And we saw also with other publishers that they, some of, of the publishers we work with, they had 95% opt-in rates simply because they put uh, a very clear message. This game is free, thanks to ads. <laughs> and and they, a lot of people actually were, were agreeing to, to, to give consent, but uh, obviously that's not, and, and Manel made a very good point, is also on the quality of the banner. So on uh, how fast uh, it appears on the, so the loading times, it shouldn't crash anything. So the experience should, should be uh, uh, at par and also the uh, the customization as well. So there are some elements uh, that are important. Uh, I always say it's not just a banner. So because if it was just a banner, you just create a, a banner or, and, and that's it. But it's also the technology behind it that is very important. And that's, mm -hmm. for example, what we focus on at user centrics to make sure that actually the experience uh, that then we help our uh, partners to provide to their gamers uh, is uh, top notch. Yeah, and to add a little bit more on the concrete numbers uh, question that you asked, um, uh, John, and, and and thanks, Manel. I think uh, that was interesting. You mentioned about a five to ten percent increase on LTV worldwide. You know, I, I was saying earlier that the that the the impact is you know is 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 obvious, immediate, and significant. And I think the real opportunity right now, so where we see the the impact immediately is here in the EU, uh, or in, in, in e, EU and uh, plus UK, so GDPR countries. Um, you know, Atomo's SDK is in hundreds of games, and so we start to see this pretty clearly across all of them. And where, you know, where we're getting consent, where we're getting trusted consent, uh, we see generally higher uh, eCPMs. Um, the, the increase in eCPMs is, is a bit, um, it, it does vary a bit. But what we see in general across, you know, the EU, we, you know, we, we, EU countries are tier one countries when we think about it from a monetization perspective, and they should monetize like uh, tier one countries, but they don't for us anyways. We see, you know, uh, EU countries in general without that consent look like tier two or even rest of the world. But as soon as we have that consent, uh, that trusted consent, eCPMs go up. We're seeing ARP DAOs and, uh, and LTVs um, of 3x to 10x higher uh, when we have consent plus uh, TCF string for those audiences that have that the versus don't. And that's that all comes back to everything we're saying here about both the quality of audiences and the quality of advertisers that, uh, that, that, that participate in this ecosystem when that trusted consent is there. Interesting. Okay, so, you know, that's a really fascinating point. Like, um. Brilliant. And, and naturally, there is you, you guys are obviously seeing increased demand for CMPs. But do you think that that demand is actually evolving to the point where people are becoming are seeing are seeing this more as an opportunity rather than I just need to do this? Uh, oh, sorry. From, from from my side, from a CMP perspective, um, there still when before Google announcement, I feel the industry still was catching up with this topic. So they were not. Uh, the awareness was not there. There was still a lot of, of publishers saying, well, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure about this banner. Uh, I, I already have my own banner. I think it's enough, you know. And a lot of topics that also Kristen mentioned of the of unlocking uh, inventory, etc., cetera, uh, was, was mentioned here and there, but always uh, like a little bit kept aside. Maybe we'll focus that next year. It's fine. We we have a lot of players in Asia or in the US. We will focus on those. So there was uh, a, a little bit of that. And then the Google announcement came, hmm. which in my opinion, didn't change the awareness on the topic. It's just 
uh, rushed everyone. Okay, we need to get a CMP, which basically uh, doesn't solve the, the 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 issue because it's as I said before, it's not just a banner. So you can get around any anything you can find uh, or the cheapest solution on the market, etc. Thinking, okay, now I'm fine, but actually that is not the case. You need to to work with technologies that actually enable uh, what Manel and also Kristen were mentioning, which is actually seeing the impact on on the user. Uh, ensuring a good experience, SDKs that don't crash, hopefully, and stuff like that. So it's very important that uh, publishers also do their due diligence when uh, when they select the, the technology and don't rush it. Oh, I need to get compliant. Let's, let me take something. Anything will work because it's not like that for sure. <laughs> I always joke. You, you mentioned SDKs that don't crash, Valerio. You know, I always joke. Uh, look, we we know we're, we're an SDK uh, as well at Atomo, and you know, we know that. Uh, I always joke that we know every single uh, SDK company says their their SDK is easy to integrate, uh, <laughs> has no impact on your game performance. And, you know, and most of them are lying, right? But but that is important, right? Finding that uh, that SDK uh, that that CMP that is easy for your developers to integrate and doesn't have uh, a performance impact. And you know that's certainly why we've been working with um, with user centrics because you know that that very much follows our ethos as well. And hopefully, Manel, uh, you and your teams have have seen the benefits of that in working with user centrics as well. Yeah, definitely. Not only that, uh, we because this is such a sensible thing, we always want to have a, a real partner that we can trust and react appropriately. So we have been working with them. For example, on our side, we fully work 100% in Unity. And it's been a, a great collaboration on, on making the, the product super nice and, and tied to the needs we had in that moment. And, and yeah, for sure. I think the real challenge for us as a publisher is... We have tons of apps, more than 80 right now, live in the stores. Um, back in the days, we were forced to add this GDPR, a simple banner. We did it two years later. Now we have this, and uh, now we have to add TCF. And we see this recurring issue year over year. And, and I think the industry is saying, okay, now we need to properly set this up and have some tool that allows us to not to update every app every year again because we lose, a, we lose a lot of effort on that. And we just want to, I don't know, toggle something on a dashboard and boom, automatically have the new regulation that may pop up in whichever region next year or something like that. So that's the real challenge. And I think that's where TMP is coming to play to is our work for sure. So how have you kind of um, handled that from a UX point of view? You know, like you, you mentioned, obviously making sure that there's well, minimize it, and there naturally will, of course, be some. But how have you kind of taken steps to ensure compliance with regular changes, but at the same time, ensure that from a player's point of view, the experience is disrupted to as, as low a level as possible? Well, there are tons of initiatives. And, and well, we are proud at Homa that we are a very data-driven company, and we test mm. and measure everything. So, as I said, we start with a base and from there we keep evolving the thing. So we might change the order of the banners, change the content of the banners, what's 100% is strictly required from the very beginning and what can be delayed two minutes later in the gameplay, maybe because I'm not going to show ads or maybe because I'm not going to track anything or just defer all the, all the sending to the server after a while, after the user has already been engaged. There are plenty of initiatives which we look for one two hundred percent improvements, but that at the end of the day, that's quite huge if we propagate to all of our portfolio and we do tiny steps towards uh, yeah. keeping it raising that. And I I can confirm it's been amazing to collaborate with Oma because they are truly data driven. So as a product person, I really enjoyed that. And uh, they, they were literally doing A-B testing on anything <laughs> that we were throwing at them, which is great uh, because that helped us to support them. So to, to enhance our A-B testing possibilities. Uh, and, and this is fundamental. This is a very important aspect on, you mentioned UX, you need to A-B test. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you think you need to do a fancy banner with dragons and, and then uh, and then the people will like it more. But actually maybe a simple message saying, hey, this game is free uh, thanks to your your consent or et cetera, it, it could work. And uh, you get a lot of 
consents just with a simple banner. So it really depends on the game, on the uh, app category. We've seen a lot of differences, even in the game game space, there are differences depending on the genre. So the type of users might be different. So definitely A-B testing is the number one uh, priority. I mean, this is not a new thing to Homa. So, so that worked pretty nicely. <laughs> yeah. For companies maybe less, um, well, not, not less data-driven, but maybe less resourced than Homa, how will kind of user centrics help in those guys kind of um, with this process? We, we, we have out of the box uh, banners that perform very well, so they can just uh, use those. They've been tested with uh, with a lot of publishers, app publishers, so uh, they are uh, pretty pretty performing. We do also have our A-B testing tools, so they can run A-B tests also simply using our technology, our analytics. So it really, you have all the tools at your disposal, even if you are a small studio, so you can uh, run your uh, small A-B testing on our analytics. Obviously, if you use more advanced analytics functions and tools, you can export those analytics to your tools and, and do more advanced analytics as Homa is doing. So really, we want to cater to any to the smallest game developer, uh, to the to the largest publisher. Uh, to be honest, uh, that's the goal because privacy um, it's mandatory for everyone. Uh, and I say unfortunately because the, the the small ones don't have the resources, and uh, I I care a lot also about them. Like uh, it's it's really important to us that they can feel safe and they don't fear, you know, that they cannot monetize any longer because they don't know what to do. If you're if you're a games publisher and there's as you said at the start, John, there's um there's publishers and developers from one person to hundreds of people, and if you're not one of those publishers that has an analytics team, uh, lucky enough to have an amazing analytics team like like Homa, um, the 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 one takeaway that I think we've seen across all of the publishers and developers that we've worked with, it's back to what you said, Manel, is if you do nothing else, um, if you if you can push having that um having that pop up come a little bit later in the player journey when they're a bit more invested in the game especially if it's a game that has a very long retention curve anyways that generally feels like a good thing right let the player get invested right well, know the player's getting hammered with a uh, with an att pop up a are you okay to to get alerts pop up and all these things so you know let's let them get into the game have fun get invested and then let's ask them uh for that consent that seems to be in general one of the one of the successes that we've seen across the board across all the developers that we've worked with okay and, and you know how you know are there any other kind of lessons that you've learned in terms of working with with publishers Kristen, from from your sort of things as an ad network yeah the you know it, it is back to um the 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 more frictionless you can make this for the player um and back to the more players you can get opt to opt into this the mm -hmm. the, the better it's going to be and you know, and that friction, I guess, or frictionless starts with the, um, you know, starts with the development team. And, you know, we we all recognize that as generally commercial people here, uh, we are interfacing at some point with the product team and the development team. And so ensuring that this feels uh, that, that they're also invested in this and this feels like a good thing to them is, is success is part of that as well. We, you know, there, there's a lot of CMPs out there. Uh, some are easier, some are harder to, to work with. Um, the So making sure that, that that you have one that's fairly easy, that the, the development team can implement quickly and start getting into that testing phase, you know, roll out, get into players' hands and get into that testing phase quicker rather than uh, later uh, is, is absolutely a positive. Manel, so, you know, Homer Games working with, with user centrics, what considerations did you take um, as a publisher when selecting yeah, which CMP to go with? Yeah, the metrics. Uh, we take decisions based on that. So we test a few of them. Uh, we start to see metrics. Also, is this sense of how easy it is to work with and how support we have on, on the personal team of, of the partner. But, but mainly uh, the metrics. We see higher... I don't know, higher ACPMs, uh, best A-B tests, uh, because AB te we A-B test different solutions too. Um, at the end, that's what we go for. Uh, because in order to A-B test, we all already have done the implementation. And usually, we don't have big issues on that. So we rely 100% on the on the app list we can win uh, on that. 
Um, can you share some success stories from from home about how privacy practices and, and privacy best practice has really kind of positively affected uh, your work's publisher? Well, uh, it's it's a long journey uh, since today. Uh, regulation has been there out there for a while, and we have been working with this since I can say more than one year now, and. It's been tough because we need to, at least, we need to convince everybody we need it. And and then, as you said, uh, automatically we see Google putting a wall in, in the in the path in January, and now everybody is interested in that. And we say, okay, thank you very much. We were talking about this one year ago, and nobody was taking care of that. Right now, our mindset and the I think the industry mindset is changing towards being legacy compliant. And I, as I said before, I think players are aware of that too, and they and they are okay. Uh, I can think on when the ATT pop up came in from Apple a few years ago. We were everybody scared this is gonna break everything, but at the end, the players were we're super comfortable with it. Like it's my privacy. I'm okay with that. Uh, so I think that's the way to go to let them trust that we take care of it. And, and this mindset is, I think it's the best thing it's happening during these days. Yeah. Manel, you made me laugh because you reminded me on an anecdote that I always uh, mentioned. It was like my first, uh, I think it was my first pocket gamer because I don't come from the gaming industry, but I started uh, three years ago when launching user centric for gaming. And I, I was there and I was speaking with a large publisher, someone from a large publisher. And I said, okay, we, uh, we have consent management. We care about privacy. And he's like, privacy, don't you have a joke? Like, like, okay, I was like, okay, we have a lot of work to do. <laughs> so yes, there is a lot of convincing to be done, not only to the market, but also internally. I've seen these challenges that home I had internally in many organizations. Uh, and, so, and there was often no connection between even legal team and developers. So the developers didn't know what the legal team was talking about. The legal team mm -hmm. didn't know what the developers were talking about. So I had cases where the legal team said, ah, oh, my developers told me that we don't track any user's data. And I'm like, that that's quite weird. You know, I think you do. Like, how do you grow your app? And they're like, oh no, ah, let me go back to the to the lead, uh, to the developer. Let me ask again. So that was the situation uh, most of the time. So a, a good tool, a good technology, and a good partnership like we have with with Oma uh, helps also to you know educate a little bit the the whole organization. But there is a lot of work to do sometimes. Um, that's true. I'll share a little anecdote as well. Just that reminded me. Um, yeah, I think I met you, Valerio three years ago at, yeah. at another games event. And I remember it was, it was uh, without saying what it was uh, where we have here, but it was in Brighton and it was outside having a beer uh, with Valerio. And I, and I remember saying at the time, oh God, I, Blair, I'm glad. I'm, I'm so excited about this. I totally believe in what you're doing, but you've got a hard job uh, mm -hmm. selling a CMP into, um, yeah. into, into game developers. And now all of us, and you know, like I said, even within a publisher like uh, Manel, it was a hard challenge. But now we have this tailwinds behind us, and it really does feel like now is the right time to uh, to be able to do this. That we don't have to. It's not a struggle to convince all the stakeholders that it was before. It, it, it's a lot easier now. Whether it's because you have to, or it's because you're going to make more money, uh, or because it's the right thing to do for the player. Everybody's starting to see this now. Definitely, definitely. And, um, you know, five to 10 percent is a pretty juicy headline number for sure. Um, and by the way, we are coming to Games Forum. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Valerio. There we go. There we go. Yeah, you can come and meet Kristen <laughs> and Valerio at um, Games Forum London folks in October. So um, check it's it out on the site. <laughs> um, but now, one, one final question before we do wrap up. We was, you know, obviously there was the revenue uplift, but are there any kind of good surprises, positive surprises that maybe you hadn't really anticipated from from implementing privacy um, compliance in your games? Well, uh, to be honest, I have to say we didn't have a big unexpected surprise because, as I said, we take very seriously all the due diligence. We try to find, we have a gorgeous team on, on monetization and acquisition and and they draft like a range on where we can stand. So 
we we expected an uplift. It's true. Maybe the 10% was a bit higher than we expected because it's really, we as a publisher, we introduce a small changes that, yeah, we look for 1%, 2%, <laughs> step by step. Uh, in, in one go, having a 10%, well, it's super good. We knew it was going to be for sure more than 5%. And yeah, and because I'm not an expert on, on monetization, I, I was surprised on the, the CPMs. I think um, the numbers really showed that the adventure, the ad adventure is higher quality. Mm -hmm. We are we are getting better ads because the advertisers know that our users are higher quality users. And I think that's that's really what the CPM uplift is, is bringing. And I was surprised for that because yeah, um, I'm not used to look at that metric. And I saw, oh, this is a big uplift. This we are we have found the gold mine, and and they said, okay, this represents this. And I was really surprised on that. Awesome, awesome. Um, so cool. Let, well, let, let's uh, nearly finish, but one final question for each of you: What would be your top tip for um, a publisher who's looking to select a CMP to? Um, ahead of uh, ahead of January, so let's start with you, Christy. Well, that's an easy one, of course. Use uh, start with user centrics. <laughs> as, the, as the easy one. Um, the I think the I'm going to give a little bit of a, a prediction back to those kind of un, the unexpected benefits and and as to you know what this means to all publishers is. You know, integrating the CMP, it's going to take a bit of a learning curve. We've all seen this, um, and and learning curves there. I think what's the the, the positive outcome of this that's, that that we're all going to see is really most of the benefits that we're seeing right now are because of the EU and are in the EU in GDPR countries. Um, but the reality is, you know, there's. 120 or more countries around the world that have digital privacy frameworks. So all the work that we're that we're putting in, that that that, um, that publishers are putting in today to implement this and implement it properly, implement a CMP like user centric uh, properly. Now you're going to get the benefits of that in the future, right? This is future proofing. All these things are going to help you as uh, as the U.S as Canada, as Australia, as Brazil, as their regulatory frameworks become um, more um, more um, legitimate, not the legitimate, it's not the right word, excuse me, as they become um, more enforced, then yeah. you know, that the work will have already been done and we won't be racing to kind of catch up to it that we're, you know, you've already future-proofed your business. So I think that's going to be the, the real reason why to do this. It's not just because of what we see in GDPR countries today, it's, you know, as Manel said, you're not going to have to do this on every game, every time a new framework comes out. Do it once, do it with a um, with a CMP that you can control on the back end, and you get the benefits forever. Great point. Really good point. Um, Larry, what's your tip for publishers besides use user centrics? No, I mean, I won't say that. I, I'll actually encourage everyone to A-B test as, as Homa did uh, the CMPs, uh, obviously. Uh, and to not, uh, one error I see often is, uh, I, I allow me this, I sometimes tell also my, uh, the partners I speak with, this is not the fish market. So it's like you, you give, who gave you the cheapest solution. Uh, that's not how it works also because otherwise you don't see the benefits of a good CMP. There are good solutions in the market. I think not so many, uh, in my opinion, uh, but there are a few, uh, it's very important to A-B test. And to go for solution that allow you to be not only to serve your needs today, but also tomorrow. So they allow you to grow. Uh, so even if you're not a large publisher, but you are, you have aspirations of actually publishing more apps, uh, it's very important that CMP can accompany you on that. So it can help you to to manage multiple apps, multiple markets, as uh, Christian was saying, mar multiple regulations. It has an A/B testing, and if you want to see if. Uh, uh, if uh, CMP has done some work with gaming for real, like check the Unity documentation, is is that do they have a Unity SDK first of all? Um, because there are CMPs, and we uh, I'm proud to say that uh, three years ago I think we, we were the only CMP at gaming events um, that have been working with gaming companies for a long time, and uh, this makes the difference because obviously we are catered, as I said before, to to the needs of uh, publishers and developers so that's really important to check before uh before say okay let me get any cmp 
And uh, last word to uh, to our publisher guest for now. Yeah, for sure. As I've been developing games for a while, and as a game developer, I just my advice would be like trust these people. Uh, they know what they do. I mean, uh, not only just censors, but probably some other CMPs, and blindly add it into your iteration of your game. Implement it. It will take you one, two, three days at most, and see the impact. You. Nobody will need to convince you. You will see your numbers in real, so you will be convinced. And it's really easy to to try it out. And yeah, it's a it's a winner. Excellent. Um, it's a winner, folks. You heard it there. Um, thanks everyone for for joining. Um, a special thanks to to Chris and Valeria and Manel for for sharing their time with us today. Um, really insightful. Re- really, really insightful. And um. You know, folks, if you do want to learn other ways of lifting your ad revenue, Games Forum London is coming up. Um, but thanks very much. Uh, thanks very much, everyone, for joining. Um, look forward to seeing you all soon. Um, and have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.